Hello, everybody, and welcome to Starnet Link. And today we have a guest on my channel, and this is Leah. So, Leah, why don't you go ahead, introduce yourself, and tell us where, where your story begins for the audience. Well, um, uh, my name is pronounced Leah. It's very common, common, common for people to say Leah, but um, it's pronounced Leah. And um, I guess my story, I'm just a normal kind of, you know, we're all a somebody, but in terms of society and our society, I'm really a nobody. I grew up in Michigan um, with a single mom of five, and um, we grew up, I guess, uh, you would classify us as, you know, I don't know if you would classify us as poor, but, you know, we, I guess, middle class. Um, but we had a lot of love in our family, a ton of love in our family. So um, I think love is the most important thing, you know, when you're, you know, growing up um, instead of stuff. So, you know, fast forward, um, I guess, uh, in 2016, I guess it goes be back, you know, like I would say when I was 43, I'm 53 now. When I was 43 years old, I had this inner, like, um, um, I guess, angst that I had to get ready for something, that I had to get ready for something. I really wasn't too terribly healthy at that time. And so I, I went on this path of, you know, I, I lost a lot of weight and I got really healthy and, um, you know, and, you know, um, to prepare me for what I, now I know why I had that feeling. And at that time I was having really weird dreams. Like my own voice one night woke me up, you know, it was like, wake up. And I woke up right away and I would wake up in the morning feeling like, feeling like I, I went somewhere, like I was in some kind of, it was very confusing to me. It still kind of is for me to even put words into what I, what that was. But um, now, and now fast forward to 2016, you know, I felt like something was really wrong. I felt like something was really, really wrong in our world. And I just ha had this feeling like, you know, what is this? So I started reaching out to God, you know, I started reaching out to the source of all creation. And, um, and I said, you know, what's going on? You know, why am I having this feeling like something is desperately wrong? And, you know, the one thing, if you ask God a question, he's going to lead you to the answer. You just have to pay attention. And he led me to the answer. And um, so I just started doing all this research. And, um, and then, you know, you know, I would do the research and then I would, you know, put it down and then, you know, just go along with my life. And then in 2017, I stumbled upon Q. And Q, I mean, he came out, I believe it was like October 27th or something like that. And then I learned about him like on the 28th. It was like really fast. And, and, um, and then I learned, you know, uh, it kind of confirmed everything that I, I, I learned in the past year. And so, you know, he, they were calling for these digital soldiers, right? So I was like, I can do that. I can be a digital soldier and active, you know, I was being a child activist, you know, um, being a voice for children whose voice was taken away from them. And so that's what I did. I became a child activist on Twitter. I was very effective. I, I uh, got, you know, I read you know, like 4,000 followers in a very short amount of time. And, uh, um, and so with the Q movement, there was a, a Q mega meme folder, right? And in this mega meme folder, they wanted you to grab these memes and go on to Twitter and, uh, you know, put these memes out there and I thought okay I can do that I'm in the comfort of my bedroom or you know I, I can do that and uh so that's what I did but these memes were very graphic and looking back I probably shouldn't have done that but you know everything happens for a reason and uh so because I had this uh 
you know, you want to defend children, you know, you want to defend innocent lives, you know, so and bring to people's attention that this is even happening because people go along with their day to day life, you know, they're going to work. I mean, they're stuck in their own, you know, cycle of life, you know, and kind of tunnel vision, if you will, in a way. And so, um, you know, so I was, you know, out there with these memes, you know, and uh, then I noticed that um, there was a couple of interactions on Twitter with, you know, a few different people that I didn't even, I didn't know. And I, I thought I was educating them. You know, they were like, you know, you should, you know, go to the police. And, you know, and I said, well, you know, they, you know, there's been Senator, Senator Schaefer in particular, you know, she set out to help children in the, in the, um, the child services, you know, she was learning what was happening with, uh, with that whole area, um, that those services, uh, child care services, um, child protection services, and you know she she lost her life for it. So that probably should have been an indication for me. But again, you know, I'm a nobody. You know, in terms of you know society, I didn't think that you know anything that anything would happen. So I noticed, and I started feeling like I was being watched. And, um, yeah, I started being followed and, um, then it, it turned into being attacked with directed energy weapons. And I've been, I've been viciously attacked with directed energy weapons every day for years now. And it's no wonder that I am alive. I, I know that when I, I have a great connection with, with God, I always have, but especially like if I was in danger, like the very first experience I had with that was when I was, I want to say like nine, 10 or 11. It was when my mom was allowing me to like go to a bowling alley and you know, I'm 53. So back then, you know, you had a little more freedom at a younger age than maybe you would now in today's day and age. So um, we were walking on a main road. I woke up that day and I just felt like something bad was going to happen. That was my very first experience. And so fast forward, you know, I was guided to, you know, as to what to do and so I did everything I was guided to do, and um, there was it ended up being a car accident on the main road that we were walking on, and it went up on the side, and I just knew that I had to walk far away from the road, <clears throat> and you know everything was fine. I mean there was, uh, yeah. So that's what happened. That was my first experience with this kind of inner knowing, if you will. So. You know, I, I felt, um, you know, so I turned to God and I said, you know, what is going on? Like, please reveal the secret, you know, before, about what's going on. And that night he gave me a very vivid dream and it was so vivid that I remember it to this moment. You know, he, I actually had a few of them that I remember. And in this dream, um, I was walking up on a beautiful palatial estate and I saw palm trees and I instantly knew that I was in California and I felt like I was in like the Hollywood area. Um, and I, I was in this house and I kept going up and up and up. I mean, this house had an escalator in it. It was huge. It, and uh, so I ended up at the very, very top in a, um, an attic space. But an attic space in a beautiful home, I mean, it was, you know, it was huge. And there was like this altar and there was a very famous star. Um, I'm not really going to say her name because I don't really want to attribute her. You know, I think that that's wrong for me to do that. But I think that she just represented the industry, the acting industry and the music industry because she's she's in both. 
And, you know, she said, you know, um, come here. And I, I said, no, thank you. And no, she's like, no, come here. And I said, no, thank you. And then um, there was this, um, I want to say this, this man just all of a sudden appeared and he had white hair and he was probably like five, eight, five, nine. And um, he physically took her out on the balcony where I saw something invisible hitting her, you know, like when someone hits your face, you know, you kind of like go like this and if somebody hits your stomach, you kind of hunch over and that's what was happening. And then I knew I was protected. I knew something was protecting me. And then I started making my way down. And as I was going down, two men in black were going up. So I'm like, oh, this is not going to end. I knew it wasn't going to end. And, um, and then, you know, that, that was that dream. <laughs> I was like, well, God, I was like, okay, you know? Um, and then I started having to learn spiritual warfare because things were happening. Like I felt like I was walking through cobwebs and I said, you know, please lead me to the answers. You know, I, I really, you know, I've always had a, a, a deep connection to God, but like during this process, like my connection is like so deep and so connected that, you know, I can ask him anything and I know he's going to provide me with the answers. I just have to pay attention to when these answers come, you know, so, um, you know, I, I knew that something was happening. Like there was something on the water line of my eye, you know, where you put your eyeliner like inside of your eye. And, um, um, you know, I knew that that was something. I felt it like moving. It was weird. Um, so I found, you know, I stumbled upon uh this video uh, on YouTube of this woman who was born into a family um, and her namesake, it was a familial, um, I guess, uh, I don't know how you would, how you would call it, um, but she, you know, was teaching people spiritual warfare is that it, and the, at the end of the day, what she was doing. So and she's like, if you, and she even, she even said, if you have things in your water line, I couldn't believe it. I could not believe it that I, what I was hearing her say that. And uh, she's like, these are marine spirits and they can be nasty. And this is what you say. And I paused it and I'm writing down what I, you know, what to say. And, and sure enough, this thing we went to my water line and I said what she told me to say. And then I heard, I heard it flat go by here and I heard going like it literally went right by my ear and I heard the buzz of it going by my ear. And I mean, mind you, you know, I didn't really grow up, you know, going to church or, you know, my mom just always taught us to treat people the way you want to be treated. And, to walk with the Christ consciousness and um, basically, and, you know, that's what I've always done. I've always, you know, been there for people and um, wanted to be helpful for people and uh, be a benefit to people. So that is my history with religion. I mean, with, you know, I'm very spiritual and I love everyone. So um, so fast forward, that was the beginning of learning spiritual warfare and it got even more heated after that. Um, and I reached out to this person that had the YouTube channel and I said, this is what's happening. I said, what books do you recommend me to get? And she recommended three books. I ordered them immediately. It was by Dr. Alakoya. He is, um, out of Africa, and if you know anything about Africa, that's a very heavily, I guess, um, I don't know what the right word you could use, but there's a lot of spiritual warfare going on in that country. 
And um, so, I mean, he gives you the verbs to put in your sentences. He tells you what to say. And I threw down. I threw down and I won because they didn't have a legal right to me. There's got to be a legal right. You have to, you know, you have to, I mean, I didn't even kill, I don't even kill spiders. I mean, I, I know that may sound weird and, you know, people think I'm weird because I don't kill spiders, but I just, I've never, never killed a spider. I just feel like, you know, they have a right to live <laughs> and I just kind of let them out or I just, if they're away from me, I just let them be and, um, they do have benefits, you know, so, you know, they really didn't have a legal right to me. So they were trying to get me to do things where they would have a legal right to me. And I knew instinctively that they were trying to do that. Like I was watching TV and just this big, huge fly, which is another representation of that world, um, satanic world. And I just picked up the fly. I didn't kill it. And I, I, I put it outside and I said what I was told to say, you know, in the name of Jesus, I cast you to a dry place where none can come in your place. And I set it out and I put it outside and it was winter time actually at, at that time, but I didn't kill it. And, um, so, so I kind of, you know, they, they, they kind of, you know, I went through that phase. And, um, and, um, and then, you know, the weapon started coming in earnest, like they like to, um, they like to rape you with these weapons. They will sodomize you with these weapons. They will, um, they really liked my, uh, they wanted to attack my left ovary and, um, you know, and these are millimeter, if you could imagine like, um, like a cat laser that you see people playing with cats, it's even smaller than that. And then you multiply it. You can multiply it, have many of them hitting you. And then they could increase in, like, it seems like it can go that tiny and then it can span out too. Like, it's like a, like, if you will, like a, a flashlight, if you will, like a flashlight that goes down to that laser point and then it spans out to widens, you know? So I'm like, so I, I asked God, I'm like, how can I protect myself from this stuff? And he guided me to it. And this hat that I'm wearing now is an EMF hat. And I have it lined with a lot of stuff in here. There's like more than just the hat in here. And um, I wear it 24 seven. I do have a liner that I, I wash, you know, I take out and I wash. And I've been wearing, I've been wearing this hat for since 2021. And a lot of these people who have been targeted for many years, you know, they develop, you know, brain injuries, you know, Havana syndrome, I guess is without in the mainstream media, if you could attribute um, you know, they do have Havana syndrome out there now with what happened with, um, with people, um, that were in Cuba. And, uh, so yeah. And then I wear rubber around my body. I mean, if you can see here, like I have, like, I have, you know, like the, on my back, um, I have, you know, and I have it all around my body, um. So I have several layers on right now and I have it going around. I, I have to protect my private parts, which they haven't been able to attack my private parts in a very long time. So now they're, you know, they're increasing, they're just kind of scratching their head, you know, like, you know, I, I have my health. I'm a very clean eater too. Um, I have my moments where, you know, I crave like, you know, salsa and organic chips or some organic ice cream, you know, I will, you know, I had some of those today, but for the most part, I eat fruit, I eat smoothies, um, organic, and I eat like a, you know, a chickpea salad with onions, cucumbers, and avocados with just salt and pepper. 
and um, that's pretty much what I eat every day. So I'm a super clean eater for the most part. And, um, and I have a very close relationship with, with God. Like, I mean, it is, you know, it's so funny because, you know, you hear of people that, you know, when they go through really bad things, that's when they turn to God, right? Um, so during this process, you know, I always want to look at a positive, you know, you know, instead of always focusing on negatives, you know, you want to see, okay, well, what, what has been positive that has come out of this? Cause I'm still going through it. And, um, you know, my relationship with God has never been stronger and I'm so grateful. I'm going to, I'm going to get emotional and I'm really, really grateful for that. So, um, you know, that's what they, you know, that's what they did and there. And then my senses, um, you know, we're all humans have, you know, humans 1.0, let's say, um, cause they've messed with us a lot as far as our DNA and stuff goes, you know, we had natural abilities. We had, you know, um, our abilities to, uh, you know, to, our senses, you know, we have more than just, you know, sorry, I moved my camera, sorry about that. And so these senses that I have, like if you can imagine, they come into the house cloaked. There's a company out of Canada, it's called Stealth Technologies, and they sell a cloaked uniform. They sell it between 82 and $83,000 for one uniform. And I should have taken a screenshot of it. I don't know why I didn't. I went back to get a screenshot and it was scrubbed. It was scrubbed from their website. And, uh, but it was remarkable that it was that much money. And so they're in your house cloaked and they're hitting you with these weapons that are handheld. They have to be in close proximity to do that. So your senses become developed your third eye becomes developed. Like you, your sensing of energy becomes developed. Like, you know, people have a toroidal field around them that you cannot cloak, you know? So my senses have become heightened. And, um, and then, you know, just my um, telepathy or, you know, because this, uh, the technology that they use, I feel like I'm in a virtual reality game where there's real life weapons. And as, as my senses got developed, um, I knew who was, um, they were like coming in through the ether. I know this is going to sound really crazy to people because, you know, but I know, I know what I know. And, um, so I'll just give you an example. One morning, um, I was hearing this name and I'm like, who is this person? You know, I don't want to say, I don't want to say who they are. Should I say who they are? Um, I mean, I thought... if you want to, yeah. Um, Okay, so, you know, Elon Musk has a lot of technology out there, and it's no surprise that, you know, people that are in the know, you know, they know that, I mean, if you look at, you know, the things that he's been trying to do, like, you know, Neuralink and linking brains to computers, right? So, I, one morning I was getting ready, and I kept hearing Evelyn, and I'm like, who is Evelyn? I don't, I, I'm like, who is Evelyn? And then a picture of his mom popped into my head. And I'm like, because I know who she is. I've seen her on social media. She's beautiful. You know, she's very beautiful. Um, uh, so, and then I was like, okay. And then I started feeling like, you know, famous people were watching me. I felt like, um, it's hard to explain, but I mean, I, I saw who was watching me. I could hear what they were thinking. And, um, 
And then they started adding stuff to my water. They started adding things to my water that would, um, I guess, deaden, um, like like fluoride, for instance, it kind of, um, you know, it's not good for you. It's, um, they say it's good for your teeth, but it's really not. Um, and it like, uh, you know, deadens parts of your brain. So one day I was taking a shower and literally my eyes started burning and my skin started burning and then my eyes and my skin burned for a few hours after my shower and i'm like they want to they want to um you know dull this part of my brain that's becoming stronger and stronger because of the situation i'm in you know if somebody is born blind or becomes blind or you know, is born deaf or becomes deaf, you have other senses that get heightened, right? So that's essentially what happened is, you know, you know, I was blinded to who was in the room with me and I was, you know, that's why my senses became so developed and keen. And also because God did that too. You know, I always say, say, please give me eyes to see and ears to hear. And, um, and, you know, he did that. So, and I can sense when they're in the room with me, I know who it is. Um, I can sense when there's angry energy, when there's mean energy here. Um, they're very frustrated with me because they can't hurt me. So, but they do hurt me. I mean, it does hurt. I mean, I, I can't say it doesn't hurt. It's, um, it's, um, um, it's, it's hurtful to constantly be, I guess, felt like you're hated, you know, you're constantly attacked, you know, I mean, it's, um, it's hurtful because I've never hurt anyone or anything ever, you know what I mean? So that part is hurtful. I've always been liked and, um, I've always kind of, um, you know, never had any problems with anybody ever in my life so that 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 does hurt <laughs> to be honest with you so I guess I don't know do you have any questions for me um the question is is that can you detect or distinguish the difference between you getting messages from like source and bad messages from whoever is attacking you can you distinguish between those two I can because it's a different it's a feeling that I've always had all my life so there's a feeling it's hard to explain the feeling I get but I've always had that feeling all my life when it comes to God and uh I don't think that they would reveal who they are because um you know I I just know because they, they, they get your neighbors around you. Well, they have for me anyway. And they go and they tell the neighbors, you know, a huge lie about you to get them on board. And they use their house as like, uh, they use their house to, um, to perform tech ops, you know? So, like the lady across the street, I could tell she had fear. You know, I could, I felt the energy of fear because she, you could just tell that she was afraid or I could tell she was afraid. So they really wouldn't want me to know that. They wouldn't want me to know which neighbors, I can tell you exactly which neighbors are involved. And actually, sort God, um, he actually tells me where to go. Um, he just last week or a week and a half ago, he said, go to the church on the outskirts of your neighborhood. And I was driving with my, my housemate, Marianne, and I said, can we go to that church, you know, and we drive up and there's this elaborate antenna. And I knew that that's what he wanted me to find. You know, they would not want me to find that. Do you know what I'm saying? Like they would not want me to know who they are um and what they're doing you know um they have tunneled underneath this house 
like a labyrinth of tunnels with all the different neighbors that are involved. And, and because I can, when I see something, I get this feeling. So then they, they, they picked a house that was further down the street. And again, God's like, you know, go this way, you know, go this way. And he's like, pay it. He, he tells me to pay attention to something. And it's a, not like a voice pay attention to this it's not like that it's a it's a feeling um it's so hard to explain and put it into words but sure enough you know there's this house that like down way down on the other side of the block that they would never want me to know that information that's why i know it's not from them they wouldn't want me to know it you know what i'm saying so then people say, well, well, why would they spend all this money on you? You know, that was another thing. Like, they would never spend that kind of money on you. Well, I mean, that's a good question. I'd like to know the answer to that, too, except for I know that they sell links to these weapons. It's like a big, like, it's a moneymaker for them. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Do you feel like they're testing these weapons on you, like using you as a guinea pig? Well, now they're probably, you know, I'm sure that that, that is the case, but I think for me it was more, it has since come out that, you know, the QAnon movement is um, the same thing that they did with in World War II with Stasi to find out who would stand up for children, you know, who would, you know, be it, you know, who would do the right thing. And then they were put on a list, you know, as a blacklist. And I'm sure that and then once you're on this list, then your information is given out to, I believe, like 1800, 1800 um, they, they sent it out to police stations, um, biotech companies, universities, um, health departments. I'm sure there's a bit of that going on. I know I feel that all eyes are on me because my health is so good. I, ha I haven't had any diminished capacity at all. Whereas, you know, I probably should not even be alive right now, truth be told, with what they've hit me with. And, uh, so he just tells me, you know, he guides me, God guides me to what supplements to take. And honestly, if it wasn't for my supplements, I don't know if, you know, I know that that is a, it's a large part of it. And also that I'm such a clean eater. Yeah. Can you tell the aud audience of how this affected your life? Did it change your life completely? Did you have like... I mean, you don't have to go into too personal detail if you don't want to, but can you tell us exactly how this changed your life? So at first, um, I became like I didn't want to leave my house. Like I was scared. You know, I, I was, I was terrified, and um, so I never left my house, which is what they want. They want you isolated. the The, the main goal in this program is to get you to suicide out of it, you know, to get, to get you so scared and in and, and pain and it, for you to commit suicide because, you know, they were subliminal messages is also a part of this program. And it was from the very, very beginning. And I remember, I remember in the very beginning, um, you know, having thoughts of suicide. And I remember saying out loud to myself, I don't even kill spiders. How can I hurt myself? You know, I, I could never hurt myself, you know? And so they send you frequencies, um, of sadness and, you know, but I just turn on music. I, I do something I've learned. I I've learned to just completely turn it around. Now I'm not afraid to leave my house. Um, you know, now they get the drones out and they literally hit me with lasers to where my face is burned. I have blisters in my, my, my mouth. And, um, but still I survive it. So I'm, I'm not going to stop going out. I have no fear of going out now. 
and um, I don't fear them at all anymore. I don't fear what they have to do for me because, you know, God said, look at all what you've been through and you're here. You know, I will protect you. And I know that he will protect me. I know that I'm protected. Even going back to that initial dream that I had, there was that man with white hair who was short and stout um, that, that physically took that person out of the at, out of the out of the attic, right? I knew that I was protected and guided, and I just had to pay attention, you know. So, fear is a huge controller, you know. So, you know, fear and faith both are things that you cannot see, right? You have to choose which one you're going to believe in. You can choose fear invisible it's false evidence appearing real or you can choose faith and i choose faith every day you know i maintain my positive outlook and and just say what did i learn from this you know how have i grown from this and and you know but yes i do want it to stop so I was talking to somebody the other night on the phone because <laughs> yet another development that they've that they've um, that you know that they've upped the ante is they they're sending in these little creatures and <laughs> this is gonna sound so crazy but these were like you know I got a an endoscope and I was looking in between the walls because you can hear them. They come into your house and they set up this weapon system. And uh, so I got this endoscope and I was looking in the wall and I saw, I saw someone in a hazmat suit because they have like blown in insulation in between. This house has, um, really big spaces in between the interior and exterior walls. So you can physically hear what they're doing. You hear a fan and then you start to feel like a microwave is hitting you, okay? And um, on top of the lasers, you know, there's a few different weapon systems that they use. And, and, and while I was looking in the wall, I saw this what looked like the only way I can describe it is a gremlin, but it was, didn't look like a gremlin. It looked, it was solid white and it was no more than one and a half to two feet tall maximum. I don't even think it was two feet tall, but it almost looked cute, you know, like a stuffed teddy bear, but it had solid black eyes. And I knew just from the solid black eyes that it wasn't benevolent. I knew that it ha was a, it was not there to be all cuddly, you know, let's put it that way. So I was like, what am I seeing? It completely, you know, I was like, okay. I was like, what is this? And, and then like the next couple of days, like I, I felt something even smaller hop up on my bed and then I sensed something flying in the room and then source guided me to call this person. Do you want me to say who I called? Um, if you want to. I called you. <laughs> so, you know, God, you know, you popped into my head and that's another thing if things just kind of pop into my head that when I'm asking a question, I know that that's, you know, you know, leading me to the answer. You can see my face is kind of turning redder now because they're hitting me with it, but that's okay. Like I'm so used to it, it doesn't really phase me anymore. So, but I do want it to quit. I do want it to stop. Um, so, and then you explained to me, cause you're very knowledgeable about a lot of stuff and you're very impressive and, uh, you explained to me, I'm like, I grabbed my phone and I called you, you answered. I grabbed my laptop and called you actually. And, um, and you knew exactly what it was. And, and now there's like tons of them and they are, they're nasty. Like they're trying to, I had to 
you know, my shielding in my back and all around my body, I had to add to it. You know, God again told me what to do and um, I did it, but I actually have marks on my back. They're like, like poking this, like, I don't even know. It's like a needle or something. I don't know. They're trying to get through my shielding. You mean like and pin pricks on your body? Yeah, I had that. I, I'm starting to get that too. It happens once in a while, but I know, I know. Have you, have they, I guess, I guess the question is, is like, what is your overall, I guess, message that you want to tell people? Like you want to be like an advocate, like saying, yes, this is real. I'm being attacked by energy weapons. They're real. Are you, are you trying to just tell your story for other people to like know what's like this is this is happening well you know if someone stumbles upon this video and they're experiencing this and they didn't come across the answers like i did you know i just want them to know that you know it's it's going to be okay um you know and you also you know saw the same you saw a dark man with a hat on and last year i saw that i saw that like i said they come in through the ether and um i saw him i was laying down to go to sleep and with my eyes closed i saw him i saw his silhouette solid black with a hat on and i recognized his energy and um i'm not really gonna i don't think i should say who it was but I recognize his energy and he is from a, um, I guess you could say a deep state family, a Illuminati family. And, um, and that's when you told me, you know, you asked me, have you ever heard of the order of the black sun? And matter of fact, <laughs> yeah, I know I've heard about them a lot about them. And I wasn't sure, I knew that they were prominent, there was a prominent families that were after me, but I really wasn't sure. And, um, you know, you cleared a lot of things up for me, but at the end of the day, you know, directed energy weapons are real. They try to break people down and you just have to be strong. You have to be strong. You have to take it for what it is. You know, these people, they hide in the shadows, you know, they're cloaked and they never reveal who they are because everything has to be deniable. So, yeah, they, uh, you know, they also attack our animals and our ant because our animals can sense them. They can see them. You know, our animals are uh, dogs and cats and they're very... Um, they're just wonderful animals. They're wonderful pets and they can see more than we can see and sense more than we can sense. So I believe that that's why they attack the animals, um, you know, so, yeah. So, but I just, you know, at the end of the day, um, if anyone is experiencing anything like that, like what I've gone through and going through, uh, just know that, um, you can shield yourself. You can shield yourself uh, asking God to shield you. I know that I've gotten through some of my toughest nights because he has shielded me. And, um, and I know that for a fact, um, you know, <clears throat> there, is, um, there is answers out there. If anyone wants to reach out to me, you know, um, for shielding um, modalities, uh, there's multiple shielding modalities that you can use that will help you. I'm happy to um, help anybody that needs help. Can you, I know that you have shielding around your body, but can you um, tell the audience like what type of shielding you use when you go to bed or like what you use in your room? Well, you know, you think of electricity, right? Because at the end of the day, this is electricity. It's like a it's like high powered um, electricity. So you think I, I thought of, okay, well, what do electricians use? What What's on the power lines? Rubber, thick rubber. So um, 
I'm actually sitting on some right now. I can show you. So, and this is all guided by God. I stumbled on this. And so this is like, um, this is a high heat rubber. It's only a quarter inch thick. It's not really big. It's pliable. It's not like it's, you know, cumbersome, right? So this I line my body with. I, you know, it's in, it's in like small strips, you know? So, um, I don't know if you can see, like, you can actually yeah, see, like, pardon me? yeah, you can see that it looks like they hold it up again. Hold yeah, you can see, like, if you can really look, you can see, like, where there's, like, where there's, yeah, like, you can you yeah, you can see where they've been hitting it. yeah, you can see where they've been hitting it. And also there is, um, There's an S Mylar. Also, this is like um, this is like foam rubber. Okay, so this is soft. This is real soft. And again, this is a quarter inch thick. And you can really actually see, like, I don't know if you can um, see. Do you see those those marks right there? Those those uh. Yeah, yeah. I can see. I can see where they're hitting it. Yeah, they're trying to poke through it. They're trying to those these little polymorphs whatever are yeah, trying it does look like teeth marks yeah yep exactly so but you know i have no fear i i don't i don't fear them as a matter of fact i send them love and i tell them that you know that they originally were very benevolent and until they were taken over and chipped and you know i talk to them because i know that they understand me so you can see them flying like if there's puck lights above me and but these have a wider wingspan I'm, i was trying to source gave me god gave me a vision of what they look like and they kind of look like they have like little like old men faces with pointy teeth is that right i was going to ask you is that what they yeah, that's like? that's right so that's what source you know he gave me a vision of what they look like and they have like a longer wingspan than like a fairy, if you will, you know, like a, they have like a look, cause you can see them. And I mean, they, they do things to my food as I'm eating. Um, I can smell them now. They have like a, like a musky, almost skunky smell. And um, yeah, sometimes I don't know what they're doing, but sometimes like if I'm sweating, like I smell like that. It's really weird. I don't know what they're doing there. Like, I don't know. I don't know why that is, but I didn't really ask God why that is because I, I don't, I don't really care, you know? So they're, you know, trying to, you know, and then the other stuff that I have, um, and then you can cut these, these, you can cut these, like I, I cut these into like a, a much smaller strips longer and I wrap it in this and I wear it like a pad. I mean, I'm just going to be straight up because they love to, to rate me and they haven't been able to do that in a very, very long time, years. So, um, and I, I wear it like I wear two pairs of boxers and like lady, like girl boxers. So, you know, it's not really, I, I can keep it clean, you know, so it doesn't really touch my skin. Um, yeah, so there's ways that you can shield yourself and, uh, you know, it may not be pretty, but, you know, it's it's really nice not being raped, you know, every single night. They were doing it every night and um, they can't do that anymore and they haven't for a very long time. So oh, I call do it you a mean, win. Do you mean physically or do you mean astrally? Um, I mean with these directed energy weapons. You know, like they, they, they will put that laser beam, you know, on your private parts, you know, they will, and, you know, you know, yeah. And, you know, they, sodom, they, they will sodomize you too with them. And that is rape and sodomy. So even though it's a weapon, it's still invasive and it's, you know, it's not okay. So 
he led me to the remedy to it. You know, God led me to the remedy and, you know, I get these ideas in my head and I know that he is guiding me and I do it. Sometimes I look like a crazy person, but, you know, there's also, there's also um, Wi-Fi covers that because they like to send you really horrible dreams, you know, like perverted, weird dreams. So I bought a bunch of Wi-Fi covers and I literally put them over my head before I go to bed. And they can't, the Wi-Fi, because it's radio frequency at that point, because they send them in through the radio frequencies and it hits your cochlea you could, I can, now I know I can recognize, I feel the pressure and I'm like, they're sending me subliminal messages. So I'll just, I'll cover that part up. I'll just put it over my hat because they're, it's downstairs. I don't have one with me. I should have had that with me, but, but yeah, it blocks it. It blocks the radio frequency because it's a Wi-Fi cover and it's very powerful. And sometimes I even wear two and three you know, and then I, I wear strips of rubber like around this part right here because it's exposed. So they like to hit me, you know, back here. But I just, you know, put this, you know, like like this around there. And then I put the Wi-Fi cover on. And it's very effective, you know. I mean, it may not be pretty, but it's inexpensive and it's effective. And then I get the th the thicker. I could have sworn I had some of that. Oh, um, I have like the thicker. Um, oh, I think I left it downstairs. But anyway, I have like the thicker um, rubber foam as well, um, which I'm wearing on my back. I'm wearing this on my back along with the thin rubber along with a Wi-Fi cover. <laughs> I just load it up and it's effective. These little polymorphs can't get through it. I, I never wore anything on my back before. Um, you know, I wear it all around because they're trying to get my, my heart. They're trying to- why, like, why do you think that they're attacking your heart? Uh, you know, I don't know. Um, because, you know, nothing has worked for them, you know, like I should not have my health in any way, shape or form. And I do, I'm very healthy and I shouldn't be. So they're just trying to, you know, add things to my water. Um, you know, I buy distilled water and I leave, you know, I have to constantly be guarding my supplements. They do things to my supplements. Um, so I have a backpack that I put all my important stuff in and I literally have to carry that around with me. And, um, and I always carry my purse with me. I mean, always, it's always around my shoulder. I can never leave anything. But these little polymorphs are so sneaky that they will get into my purse while I'm sleeping right? It's against my body. So, um, you know, I just, uh, yeah, it's just, it's, it's really kind of crazy, but I know I'll survive it. I know I'm going to survive this. I know that this is coming to an end. So, and the, what I learned from it, I'm very grateful for, I'm very grateful for it. You know, my senses, you know, absolutely coming alive and getting stronger and stronger because of this situation it made me stronger. So, and it's strengthened my relationship with God to the point where, you know, if I had to do it all over again, I would, you know, it's not fun. Don't get me wrong. I want it to end, but the benefits that I have, um, you know, you really have to focus on those sometimes, you know, um, yeah, it's just, you know, the, the good is great, you know, but I do want it to end. It has to end. It's not, they're wasting their time, their money, and their energy. So, I mean, so I just say, you know, what's next? You know, what am mm -hmm. I going to learn to survive next? My attitude. 
Do you have any like messages or any advice that you want to give people about this energy weapons or anything that you've learned about these type of energy weapons? You know, you can shield against them. You can shield against them. I mean, I'm living proof that you can shield against them. Um, and um, I've spent thousands of dollars. I've spent so much money. Um, you know, I I'm gonna go and get one thing that I I sleep on just so you, just so I can show your audience. Hold on for just one second, okay? So it's just where I'm sitting and working. You can see here the peak, 2,280 volts per meter. Okay, so I, I do use mylar as well. You know, I'm sitting underneath mylar because they, they these things can shoot up from the floor. I don't know. They get in, in between the floorboards. You know, they can, they're very good at what they do. They're very, very good at what they do, but so this is the thicker, this is the thicker foam. It's soft, you know, it's not hard. And so what I do is I, I have several of these. They're not that expensive. And I lay on those, I, I lay on them. And um, it's very hard for them to get through that. And it also, anything that's metal, becomes an extension because metal is a conductor. Like if a, if a, um, like during a storm, if a, if an electrical line hits a fence, they say don't touch the fence because it then acts as like an extension because it's such a conductor. So they, they put these laser beams, like if you're laying on a mattress, for instance, and it's a metal coil mattress, the metal, the, the mattress will vibrate. It'll literally become like a, it felt like I was on a grill, like being cooked, you know, that's what it felt like. So that negates that. It doesn't stop it completely, but it negates it. It like helps it, it like dampens it, if you will. And it's rubber, so anything rubber. <laughs> do, you, do you think that they're specifically attacking you because you tried to expose them what they were doing to children? Oh, yes, without a doubt. Yeah, without a doubt, without a doubt. Yes. It's all about the kids. It's all about the children. Yes. And um, there's very um, high-level people involved, very high, high-level people that you would never, the people that we were meant to trust in our society the most are the ones that are involved. And that's a fact. Well, I wanna say thank you so much for coming on the show and sharing your information and telling your story. It's very brave. I, I understand that they might attack you a lot more because of your speaking out, but I really do think that this video of you speaking out will help people understand that this is real, this is occurring to people, and hopefully that we can get people to univize and to start working together, like remote viewers, people who are really good with astro travel, to see if we can take down these networks to stop this from attacking people and I do believe that you are li living proof that this is real this is happening and I just want to say thank you so much for coming on my show and sharing this information and educating people about electronic warfare welcome also you know Kimberly Ann Gogan she's with United Network News um um, it, it, you know, there's so much happening in our world that's good. You know, I, I want people to know that, you know, that wonderful things are, are going to happen for our world and this will fade away. It will not exist anymore. And um, 
if anyone wants to know how to get a hold of Kimberly Ann Bogan or to watch her um, situational updates, she has um, a news program Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And um, she's an amazing lady. Um, it's very deep. We're not going to really go into that, but um, if anyone you know wants to have a link to um, to watch um, the news, because it is a news program um, with uh, field messengers from all over the world that you know they tell their story or you know whatever it could be from you know going to their state park to going to their local store uh, or telling about a, an issue that they're having in their community um, and also world news and then she gives sit reps you know her uh, the you know situational updates at the end and um, she's amazing and she's she's really done so much for our world so if anyone you know wants to know how to you know watch that I'd be happy to you know send them a link <laughs> yeah well um yeah thank you so much for coming on my show and I hope that you have a wonderful um day um but thank you so much for coming on my show I really appreciate it Awesome. You do a great job. You have so much knowledge and, you know, for just being, being your age, you know, you just are, um, you're really, you're really impressive. You know, I just want to let you know that. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. You're welcome.